So what's good, fam? Listen, I know we've been given a lot of praise and respect, rightfully so, and attention to the James Webb Telescope. Rightfully so, bro. It's doing some phenomenal, phenomenal things, right? But we can't forget about what came before James Webb, right? And I'm specifically speaking about the Voyagers, right? I'm just now learning about them, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? This is, this is before my time, you know? So we're gonna take a trip back down memory to the beginning, you know, what happened. This video here is what happened to Voyagers and where they are now, all right? So if you're new to the channel, man, hit that subscribe button, join the family, all right? And make sure you go show some love to Brightside for the video. Subscribe to them as well. All right, let's check this out. All the planets of the solar system are slowly lining up. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune are about to form a straight line. This event, called the Parade of Planets, occurs once every 176 years. I was wondering, I was thinking to myself, I wonder how often that happens. You know what I mean? hundred, Once every 176 years. So I want to know where we are right now in that that timeline to know when that'll happen again. Will it happen during our lifetime? Did we? Did I miss it or, or what? This event, called the Parade of Planets, occurs once every 176 years. The last time this happened was almost 40 years ago. And it was a great chance to explore all these planets in one go. On August 20th, 1977. Dang it! So that means I won't get a chance, man. 40 years ago, that's 136 years before the next one. Dang, bro. So for some of y'all who were, were, <laughs> were born around that time, right? And actually were aware of what was going on, did y'all get a chance to see or, or pay attention to the news and watch or like what was going on? Bring me up to speed for that time, man. See, this is why I need like those those type of like older people around me that can tell me those type of stories and I can soak up that knowledge and information, man. You know what I mean? I have nobody in my family like that are into this. That's why I enjoy us doing this together because I have nobody around me that's into this type of stuff. You get what I'm saying? So I, I, I have to watch these videos to get my information and reminisce and, and see others reminisce. Hopefully I can see a video of somebody reminiscing on when that happened and what was going on in the world. Explore all these planets in one go. On August 20th, 1977, thousands of people gathered outside NASA's Kennedy Space Center they came to witness the launch of the most ambitious and distant space mission in history. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Launch rocket Titan took off from Earth and left the atmosphere. As soon as the rocket reached outer space, it launched the probe Voyager 2, which began its journey. The probe consisted of a bus 1.5 feet in height and almost six feet wide. On top of it, there was a round 12-foot wide antenna. Most of the scientific equipment was mounted on a boom that extended eight feet outward. On September 5, 1977, Voyager 1, the identical space probe, left our home planet. It sent us pictures of Earth and the moon. It soon overtook Voyager 2, launched two weeks earlier. That's why the second probe has the number one in its name. And so the journey through dark space began. March 5th, 1979, about four Earth-Sun distances away from our planet, Voyager 1 came close to Jupiter and prepared its scientific equipment to explore the planet. The probe had a dozen gadgets, including a two-camera system with narrow and wide-angle lenses, so it could take full-length photos of the planet with the wide-angle camera, as well as close-up photos of specific places on the planet and its satellites. The probe also had a radio science system to determine the atmospheric composition, weight, and gravitational fields of the planets it came across. Infrared and ultraviolet spectrometers could help measure radiation and temperature invisible to the human eye. Various sensors were used to examine cosmic rays. Voyager 1 was the first to find volcanoes outside Earth. 
Those were on Jupiter's satellite, Io. It has dozens of See, that still, like, blows my mind. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? To, I don't know why a person, and I can't speak for everybody, but a person like myself thinks that this type of stuff only is is here on Earth. Like, volcanoes, earthquakes, different things like that. Tropical storms, you know what I mean? When we was looking at that video before on, I think it was Saturn, and it had that red eye, and it was actually a storm that had been brewing for centuries. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know why. I guess it's, it's just normal. Maybe it's normal that you walk around in your little bubble and stuff like that. And you think this is only happening here. We're the only ones dealing with volcano eruptions that devastate us. You know what I'm saying? Like, so to hear it discovered, that's just, I'm sorry, mind blowing to me. You know what I mean? Cosmic rays. Voyager 1 was the first to find volcanoes outside Earth. Those were on Jupiter's satellite, Io. It has dozens of active volcanoes that constantly spew lava. Then the probe pointed its cameras at the Great Red Spot. That's how people learned that- My bad, it was Jupiter. My bad, I think I said Saturn. Satellite, Io. It has dozens of active volcanoes that constantly spew lava. Then the probe pointed its cameras at the Great Red Spot. That's how people learned that it was a giant cyclone-like storm that hasn't stopped for the entire history of observations of Jupiter. It was also the first time when lightning was detected outside of our home planet. And in the invisible spectrum, Voyager 1 noticed that Io acted like an electrical generator for Jupiter. Ions, which are charged particles, were constantly flying toward the gas giant. And that's another phenomenon that, you know what I mean, I would like to go more in depth and and seeing what information that they've discovered about lightning like it's just that's just one of those phenomena that that still baffles the mind when you see it the sharpness of it the sporadicness of it just you know what i mean i want to go in depth on that ions which are charged particles were constantly flying toward the gas giant this electrical current was five million amps soon voyager one continued its journey Five months later, Voyager 2 approached Jupiter 2. This gas giant has rings around it. They're not like Saturn's though. Jupiter's rings consist mostly of dust. When the planet's rocky satellites collided, they turned into small debris. Gradually, this debris turned into fine dust. Then Voyager 2 approached Europa. This moon is completely covered by a crust of ice, and beneath it, there may be a liquid ocean where life can possibly exist. Voyager 2 was the first to capture the cracks in Europa's ice crust. While flying near Io, Voyager 2 discovered that six volcanoes on its surface were still erupting. This meant that the periods of activity of these volcanoes could last for months. Both space probes... Now, when you see that, right, are we being spared here on Earth? Because you just heard that a continuous eruption of volcanoes you know what i mean just spewing out are we being spared that a lot of ours are well some of ours are still like just dormant and haven't been you know they spew out and then they go back to being calm or whatever like that's something to think about man it could be a situation like that where it's just and i know it's things happening under the surface with volcanoes i've heard that before it's constant things going on that you know we just don't see it spewing out doesn't mean it's not being active i get that but i'm just saying spewing out wise that would be insane to think that we have one that's just constantly just overflowing and maybe we do and i just don't know about it but that's insane to hear we discovered that six volcanoes on its surface were still erupting this meant that the periods of activity of these volcanoes could last for months. Both space probes circled the gas giant several times and then dashed further into space. Such a gravitational maneuver allowed them to gain more speed and save fuel for the trip. By November 9, 1980, Voyager 1 had already traveled eight Earth-Sun distances away from home. The space probe arrived at Saturn. It discovered three new satellites of the gas giant, Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. This proved the theory that these were the moons that kept the planet's rings in line. It also turned out that unlike Jupiter's, Saturn's rings also contained ice. Voyager 1 took a peek at Titan, Saturn's largest satellite. 
It's 50% larger than the moon and even has an atmosphere. It's the only place in the solar system besides Earth where liquid water has been proven to exist. That's why scientists don't deny the possibility of life there. Then it was time for another gravity maneuver. Voyager 1 once again darted away from the planet's orbit. This time, it was aiming upward relative to the line of the parade of planets. Almost a year later, Voyager 2 arrived there. It made a flyby of several of Saturn's icy satellites. Supposedly, a long time ago, these moons collided and knocked huge chunks of ice and rock out of each other. This debris orbited Saturn, collided, and slowly crumbled into dust, consisting of ice and rock. This is how the famous rings of Saturn were born. Another gravity maneuver, and Voyager 2 set off for the next gas giant. Five years later, it arrived at its destination, 17 Earth-Sun distances away from our planet. For the first time ever, a human-made object approached Uranus. Voyager 2 discovered 11 new moons there. The probe also found that Uranus was the coldest planet in the solar system. Its temperature... Yeah, that, that distance away from the sun, that far the distance away from the sun, I bet it is. The probe also found that Uranus was the coldest planet in the solar system. Its temperature is negative 350 Ooh. degrees Fahrenheit. That's four times colder than the temperature at the South Pole. At that time, the Deep Space Network was being tested on Earth for the first time. It's a network of radio telescopes all over the planet. They aim at certain points in the sky to establish communication with extremely distant objects. These telescopes have been successfully receiving signals from Voyagers 1 and 2. August 25, 1989. Voyager 2 had already traveled 23 Earth-Sun distances and arrived at Neptune. It was the first time people received images of this blue planet from such a close distance. The probe discovered six new moons there and also took the first pictures of the planet's rings. Engineers then turned off the probe's cameras to save power for its main computer and the instruments that measured the solar and interstellar wind. Voyager 2 left Neptune and headed into deep space. That's why it no longer needed the cameras. A few months later, Voyager 1 sent its last photo back to Earth. It was a family portrait of our entire solar system. Every pale dot was a planet. You can barely recognize Earth in the picture. After that, the camera was turned off to... That right there. Put that into perspective of what all is out there, bro. And to think, like like you said, we could be a dot just in something like this, bro. Just a, a mere dot. <laughs> Still think we alone? You can barely recognize Earth in the picture. After that, the camera was turned off to save power. This was the start of the interstellar mission for Voyager 1. For 15 years, Voyager 1 had been flying to the edge of the solar system. On December 16, 2004, the probe passed through the termination shock. This is where the solar wind suddenly slows down and heats up after colliding with the interstellar wind. The space probe managed to endure this test and continued its journey. In 2007, Voyager 2 crossed the same boundary. At that point, sensors recorded a temperature of about 266 degrees Fahrenheit, but the probe managed to withstand it and continued its journey through the dark cosmos. Both Voyagers moved through interstellar space in different directions. They discovered that the heliosphere, the solar wind bubble, is not perfectly round, but more like an egg. August 25th, 2012. Voyager 1 became the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. It's now also the most distant artificial object in human history. On November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 also left the solar system. The two probes continued their journey into deep space. Right now, the Voyagers have been operational for 44 years. Voyager 1 has traveled 153 Earth-Sun distances and is moving forward at 38,000 miles per hour. In about 300 years, the probes will reach the Oort cloud. This is a hypothetical region around the solar system with nothing but asteroids and blocks of ice. Scientists believe they might reach the nearest stars in the next 40,000 years. Perhaps one day, the Voyagers will enter these star systems and explore unknown worlds. There may be planets there that look like ours. The probes may even be able to find an intelligent civilization there. For this purpose, each Voyager carries a golden record with a message on it. There are 115 images. Among them, there's our number systems, a map of the solar system and pictures of its planets, diagrams of human DNA, portraits of people, 
and landscapes from Earth. There's also greetings in 55 of Earth's languages, including the oldest and newest of them. With them reaching these distances, bro, and them reporting back new things and planets and, and stars and stuff like that, listen, bro, listen. Again, that little, the people that are like, man, ain't nothing out there. Okay. Okay. Keep, keep thinking that. I'm not saying it is. I'm just not going to be naive, though, at the same time. You know, I, I personally think there, there is, you know, and knowing that these voyagers, James Webb, and the new things to come can reach these distances and give us more information, I do think we're going to find what we're looking for. And that's other life. Stems of human DNA, portraits of people, and landscapes from Earth. There's also greetings in 55 of Earth's languages, including the oldest and newest of them. There are also 90 minutes of music from every corner of our planet. The Voyagers also carry a device to play these sounds. If another civilization gets this record, their scientists could decode the data step by step. And then that civilization may decide to pay us a friendly visit. They'll have now, now that's the thing. That's where we get up ahead of ourselves a little bit. Will it be a, a friendly visit or will it be like Independence Day, the movie? Remember? And then that civilization may decide to pay us a friendly visit. They'll have to repeat the heroic journey of the Voyagers, though. Dozens of light years through dark space. Then crossing the border of the solar system, and finally flying past Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and the asteroid belt toward the little blue planet. We can only hope that people will be advanced enough to welcome them. Sorry, y'all, if y'all hear them out there cutting the, they're out there doing some long work right now, my bad. But listen, fam, if they do, I hope that's in their contingency plans. You know, everybody has the contingency plans of if this breaks the, one of the Voyagers, this happens, then we, we're we ready to do this. But what's in the contingency plan if we find life, they notice us, and then they start headed back towards this way? What is the contingency plan? And I think we need to know as, you know, people on this earth we want to know what's the contingency plans but i gotta go because they're making a tremendous amount of noise so y'all get at me in the comment section man and let me know what y'all thought of this video extremely extremely fascinating it's your boy l man until next reaction i'm gone peace